Uh, dear colleagues, my name is Elena Bumbeikro. Uh, I'm a professor of social policy here at the University of Helsinki. And I have the honor to, to give a small welcoming speech. I will also be chairing this first session today. Uh, the Nordic countries are today frequently praised by many non-Nordic researchers and politicians alike for what are regarded as the many favorable outcomes of their welfare state. Inhabitants of Nordic countries are among the happiest in the world and display the highest levels of generalized trust. Their countries are the safest and so on. You have heard this. Indeed, for some international observers, they have become the examples of equal, fair societies, almost too good to be true. At the same time, from an intra-Nordic perspective, it seems as if such a narrative has, for some considerable time already, instead been regarded by many as precisely that, a bit too good to be true. The focus in the Nordic narratives has arguably been, and is today, much on shortcomings, problematic outcomes, and various structural, cultural, political, economic and more recently also ecologi ecological challenges facing the Nordic welfare states. The main title of this conference, Towards Resilient Nordic Welfare States, may perhaps be seen as indicative for this kind of thinking as well. How then to explain this somewhat paradoxical situation as regards the image of the Nordic welfare state? The same ideas and policy solutions that are currently under political and scientific debate within the Nordic countries are the ones especially admired elsewhere in the world. Has the Nordic thinking on the Nordic welfare state been struck by the notorious law of Jante? The Jante Loven, or Jante Lagen in Scandinavian, is a concept that originates in a satirical book from the 1930s by a Norwegian Danish uh, writer, Axel Sandemuse. It comprises a set of 10 commandments which together aim to illustrate the kind of thinking characteristic of small town life. Here, in small town, no one is allowed, among other things, to stand out in a positive way, to regard him herself as anything special in relation to others, or to feel entitled to teach others anything. Originally picturing the fictive uh, Danish town of Jante, this mental model has turned out to be both vital and very important mindset in all the Nordic countries. While this explanation of the Jantelag does seem tempting as a hypothesis for explaining the current rather critical thinking on the Nordic welfare state as well, there might be also other explanatory factors involved. While one of the more obvious ones could have to do with the differing points of reference between Nordic and other observers, Another has to do with the varying periods of evaluation, while the international admiration has to do with results achieved to date. Nordic debates usually concern and have concerned the future. And just as regarding stock prices, prior gains are not a guarantee of future success. A third aspect is related to the question of what constitutes a Nordic welfare state who has the power to define it, and how policies and their outcomes can be identified and measured in a robust way. Around such questions, research both by Nordic and international scholars on Nordic welfare can make valuable new contributions during our time of the questioning of everything. Thereby, by also continue to play an active part of its own in the development of the futures of the Nordic welfare states. In order to create credible solutions for resilient Nordic welfare states, there is today a need to enhance our understanding on all welfare policy aspects. 
These include, for instance, politics, ideas, and the role of various actors on various levels, as well as regarding popular support and various indicators of policy outcomes. At the same time, there is a need to question whether we need to revise some of our epistemological points of departure and consider new research methods. We should also be critically aware of the ever-changing factors affecting the conditions of welfare state research and the various factors affecting it. Only some of these have directly to do with the welfare state development, but they might still affect the ways in which welfare issues are dealt with scientifically and what issues are kept in focus. The notion of a common history has constituted an important part of the construction of the narrative of the Nordic welfare state during its whole history. Its continued importance was highlighted, for instance, by the fairly recent ideological battles regarding the ownership of the Nordic welfare model concept. Thus, also a continuing re-evaluation of various aspects of the history of the Nordic welfare state and its implications for current deba debates is called for today. We hope that this conference may serve its purpose of being a suitable arena for stimulating discussions between Nordic and international scholars from different disciplines on Nordic welfare state research and the prerequisites for their resilience. On behalf of the organizers, the University of Helsinki and the Social Policy Association in Finland, in cooperation with the Finnish Center for Pensions and the National Institute for Health and Welfare, I wish you warmly welcome to the conference. Thank you.